Ms. Chara Chan. So, accessibility and affordability are key in giving Singaporeans a greater peace of mind about health care. But much of these actions are augmenting the support rather than preventive. As we extensively focus on how to enable the baby boomers to age in place, we must begin thinking of strategies to ensure the generation X and Y is managing their health on a different trajectory. A trajectory where the starting point of their mental and health state are healthier with lower dependence on medication and need for longer, t longer term care needs in future. It is common knowledge that we must eat well and exercise frequently to stay fit. But apart from health campaigns or one-off activities like the National Step Challenge, Let's Beat Diabetes, how has MOH engaged the Gen X or Y on a continuous basis to ensure that we have a future ageing population that is healthy? I say we need longer term plans, first on exercise. Given the busy schedule of our young working adults, accessibility to exercises is critical. The community exercise initiatives by HPB and Active SG is encouraging. It not only provides exercise options close to home, it also encourages community bonding. Is there any plan for MOH to keep this interest towards healthy lifestyle more sustainable? Second, healthy eating habits. Variety and ready availability of food choices today have spoiled our consumers at a young age. With their busy lifestyles, more families are dining out and consuming more as shown in the National Nutrition Survey. While food preference may be individual, some policy changes can help with the mindset change in dietary habits. Some areas for consideration I would like to put up are A, type of processed food that's allowed to be sold in vending machines near the residential neighbourhood, medical facilities and the institutions of higher learning. B, proportion meal sizes sold in hawker centres and food courts at, and commercial rate prices. C, inculcating the concept of discipline in healthy food intake rather than the mere caloric value of every bite. As we understand there is a growing need for caregiving support to our elderly, we are constantly looking at ways to supplement this network of caregivers. This effort can enhance the supply and we must continue doing so. But as we extend this support through foreign domestic workers to future robots, we must never forget the human touch. The emotions and human interactions remain the backbone of caregiving. I would like to highlight a specific group whom MOH can consider tapping upon. There is a pool of low-income women and single mothers estimated to be about 25,000, representing a third of Singapore's unemployed population. Some of them had roles of caregiving to their families and certainly many still bear the brunt of caring for their own children. Their unfortunate family circumstances aside, these women require the necessary skills to gain confidence and rebuild their lives. But beyond themselves, what we can potentially change here is the provision of employment and lifting the families out of poverty in a dignified way. There are VWOs like Daughters of Tomorrow who began in 2017 to provide professional training skills for these women in elder care services. They have successfully placed them in elder care sector or as freelance caregivers. With a strong push for CNS, MOH can assist by working with these VWOs to identify a pool of known resources and accelerate the training of the individuals through funding or fill the gaps in resource deployment. As a start, these beneficiaries can be assigned to work within the community where they lived in. The benefits are twofold as they can manage caring for their family and also became fully employed. Over time, I hope these women will also have more options in employment and can better care for their own elderly at home and be financially independent. And lastly, Seniors Mobility and Enabling Fund. Today, SMF provides the seniors with subsidies for assistive device and home care items or transport. But there are those seniors whose annual property value do not fall under the current criteria and may also face challenges. With the advent of technology, we should look beyond direct subsidies into social outcome to benefit the larger group of seniors. For example, social partnerships with the private sector in creating environment and alert tools from remote operating centres that can deploy assistance to the seniors that are in need, or to provide home-based care products and services where it also monitors the health and movement conditions of seniors. Another way is to create new funds for app developers who can create socially engaging apps that aim at active ages or to draw experience from those who understand the mindset of how an elderly reacts. For example, like Madam Masako Wakamiya, 82 years old, who is one of the world's oldest app developers. 
we should creatively generate options and create accommodative relief for individuals and families, rather than one where individuals are more likely to become supplicant recipient of charities.